안녕하십니까 한 캐나다 오픈 세미나에 참석해 주신 모든 분들 환영합니다 저는 오늘 행사의 사회자 김예원입니다 반갑습니다 Good evening from Toronto and thank you for joining us My name is Jennifer Kim and I'm your MC tonight 오늘 행사는 줌으로 실시간, 실시간 진행될 예정이오니 음소거를 꼭 해주시면 감사하겠습니다 As you can see, we're doing this event live through Zoom today, so please, we ask you stay muted throughout the evening. 주 토론토 총영사관은 포스트 코로나 시대 다양한 분야의 협력을 활성화하기 위해 캐나다 한인 교수 협의회와 공동으로 한 캐나다 오픈 세미나 시리즈를 진행하고 있습니다. The Korean Consulate in Toronto has organized an open seminar series in collaboration with the Korean Canadian University Professors Forum. to promote cooperation in various fields for the post-COVID era. Before we start the seminar, we'll first hear from the Consul General. 오늘 강연 소개에 앞서 먼저 김득환 총영사님의 환영사가 있겠습니다. Good evening, everyone. I would like to thank you all for participating in the seminar, which focuses on global e-sports and the game industry. Especially, I want to extend my sincere thanks to Professor Dal Yong Jin from Simon Fraser University. The e-sports and game market has become far bigger over time due to the rapid development of ICT. Especially in the midst of COVID-19, this industry is gaining traction. with more and more people around the world. Both Korea and Canada have invested heavily in the promising e-sports and game industry. The Korean government has invested a lot in internet infrastructure after the 1997 Asian financial crisis. And Korea now has the top e-sports ecosystems in the world. I see huge potential for further cooperation between Korea and Canada in the years to come. Against this backdrop, today's lecture will offer fresh and fascinating insight into the global e-sports and game industry. Thank you, and I wish you The very best in your future study and work. 감사합니다, 총영사님. Thank you, Consul General. 오늘 세미나 연차는 Simon Fraser 대학교 Communication School 교수이신 진 다룡 교수님입니다. 진 다룡 교수님은 2005년 일리노이 대학 Communication 연구소에서 박사 학위를 수여하셨으며 디지털 플랫폼과 디지털 게임, 세계화와 미디어. 미디어와 문화의 정치, 경제 등에 대하여 연구하고 가르치고 계십니다. 또한 수많은 책을 저술하셨으며 학술지에 많은 기사를 실으신 바 있습니다. It is my pleasure to welcome Professor Da Ryong Jin tonight. He's a distinguished professor at School of Communication, Simon Fraser University. After working as a journalist for many years, he completed his PhD in the Institute of Communications Research at the University of Illinois in 2005. Professor Jin's major research and teaching interests are on digital platforms and digital games, globalization and media, traditional cultural studies, and the political economy of media and culture. He's the author of numerous books, including Korea's Online Gaming Empire, Smartland Korea, Mobile Communication, culture and society, and transmedia storytelling in East Asia. Professor Jin is the founding book series editor of Rutledge Research in Digital Media and Culture in Asia, while directing the Center for Policy Research on Science and Technology at Simon Fraser University. 오늘 진다른 교수님께서 글로벌 e스포츠 문화와 한 K 게임 산업을 주제로 강연을 하십니다. 오늘 강연을 통해 21세기 들어 더욱 중요성이 증가하고 있는 e스포츠 게임 문화와 산업에 대하여 좀더 알아가는 유익한 시간이 되기를 바랍니다. 강연 이후 질의응답 시간이 예정되어 있으니 발표 내용에 대하여 궁금한 점이 있으실 경우 채팅창에 미리 남겨주시면 감사하겠습니다. 
Today, Professor Jin will be sharing his expertise on the theme of global esports culture and game industry. We hope you find this session useful and interesting at the same time and learn more about the esports culture and game industry that is growing ever than before. There will be a Q&A session afterwards, so if you have any questions about today's topic, please do not hesitate and share your questions using the chat function. 그럼 이제 진다룡 교수님을 모시겠습니다. Please welcome Professor Jin. Uh, thanks for uh, organizing this wonderful event, uh, uh, Toronto uh, Korean uh, Consulate, and thanks for you know, inviting me, and thanks for uh, you know, the interesting uh, Jennifer Kim. Today I'm going to talk about esports, in particular the comparison between Korean esports and the Canadian esports. Uh, I'm not only talking about industry, but also talking about uh, youth culture. Uh, esports, uh, some of you may understand the esports very well, and some of you uh, work as the esports players or fans. Others may not understand what esports means. Therefore, uh, I will talk about esports uh, very easily, uh, relatively uh, better than the, uh, the academic uh, in the presentations. Uh, esports is an electronic sport, and the leagues in which players compete uh, through networked games and the related activities, uh, uh, esports has existed since the early 1970s. However, a uh, competitive player versus uh, player digital game play has been a heavily uh, promoted, uh, promoted feature of overall game culture in the early 21st century. Uh, esports consisting of games, uh, media, and sports, meaning esports is not still gaming, uh, esports is the combination of three major components, uh, games, uh, media, and the sport. Uh, it's one of the most significant youth cultures, meaning global youth uh, have participated in esports as uh, either professionals, or players, or fans. Uh, 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 the game industry is adopting more flexible uh, opinions of public event composition uh, consumption with the uh, goal of you know, the generating higher profits. Uh, therefore, uh, global esports in terms of revenue, uh, uh, as this slide shows, you know, has been uh, growing uh, you know, the, every year. Uh, so this slide shows that uh, in 2012, you know, the esports the market of esports was only uh, 130 million, but uh, uh, in 2021, prediction uh, uh, is about. 1.65 billion dollars, meaning over the past 10 years, uh, esports increased uh, almost 13 times. Which is phenomenal. Uh, there are several uh, major topics, important topics, but again, uh, there are some general audiences and there are some uh, export. Therefore, uh, let me explain a few of the major point. Uh, first of all, I will talk about the history of esports. Uh, secondly, uh, institutionalization of esports. Later, I will talk about what, uh, the reasons why esports has become a global phenomenon uh, from uh, you know, the small country, South Korea, uh, to the end of the global uh, you know, the, uh, space. Uh, first, I will talk about a potential uh, shift of esports genre from online to mobile gaming, meaning uh, these days many people are enjoying esports and the digital gaming on smartphones, not the other PCs. So I will talk about the manner uh, we need to transfer to uh, from uh, uh, online and the mobile gaming culture is occurring. Uh, finally, I will talk about the major platform to enjoy esports between broadcasting and the smartphones. In terms of a major methodology, uh, not only this one, but also others, I conduct uh, in-depth interviews in uh, both uh, Canada and South Korea. Therefore, it's a kind of comparison uh, study between uh, Canadian esports and the Korean esports. So I compare uh, the Korean esports scene and the Canadian esports scene uh, while contrasting uh, professional gamers uh, and amateur uh, gamers. So uh, let's briefly talk about the, the history of esports. Uh, the first video game uh, tournament ever uh, staged in 1980 uh, by Atari. Atari is the, uh, the arcade game uh, producer, now part of Nintendo, a uh, Japanese uh, you know, the console game uh, company, a producer of a video game version of Space Invaders. 
uh, in the other this is slide might see the other space in the uh, invader game. Uh, you might enjoy it when you were young in the end of the 1980s, early 1990s. So uh, Space Invader uh, was the end of the, one of the uh, first games in, the, in eSport. Of course, it developed uh, in the United States. Uh, the first nations, uh, national Space Invader came, uh, uh, championship took place in New York and they had a regional event in LA, uh, San Francisco, and uh, Chicago. Uh, Space Invader Championship game attracted over uh, 10,000 you know, uh, participants, and uh, you might see on the end of this particular slide. Uh, this event uh, closely resembled today's eSports competition. Later, uh, one year later in 1981, a uh, Seattle based company Tournament Games also made the other three day national uh, video game championship. Uh, however, uh, the, this you know, the space uh, invader you know, the championship was a kind of old uh, based on the arcade game uh, on the end of the PC. So therefore, you know, the, uh, we might think of two uh, recent you know, the games, uh, which are uh, PGL and the end of the CPL. Uh, two gaming leagues that formed in the uh, United States in 1997 are attracted to jump studying the contemporary history of esports. The professional gamers leagues, PGL, uh, you know, the, uh, in conjunction uh, with the, the AMD uh, chip company and the cyber athlete professional league, uh, CPL. However, uh, in no other country did the esports become uh, more popular than in Korea in the uh, late 1990s. Uh, which established Korea uh, and Seoul in particular as the home of esports. Uh, although uh, Korea is not the uh, first country, it's not the only country to have developed esports, uh, Korea has been known as the capital of esports and the mecca of esports by both national and international media and game players. Uh, esports not only have a significant impact on Korean culture, uh, Korea has influenced the development of global uh, esports. <clears throat> Uh, Korea advanced esports due to several social milieu, uh, social economic milieu, meaning uh, in the several social environment, including the rapid growth of broadband and the PC bang. Uh, as you might understand, Korea developed uh, broadband high-speed internet uh, around in the late 1990s, uh, for the first time uh, around the globe. And this infrastructure broadband has greatly uh, influenced the growth of uh, game company and uh, therefore esports. Timely, uh, PC Bank, uh, after the 1997 uh, crisis, as uh, uh, Consul General Kim Duk Khan uh, introduced Korea, uh, was in the 1997 economic crisis and therefore developed ICTs. Uh, PC Bank, uh, Internet Cafe, was not the end the most significant you know, the development during the period. Because of the end of the PC bank, uh, because of broadband, Korea could develop you know, the digital games and later uh, esports. Uh, secondly, uh, several online gaming uh, uh, already uh, developed. For example, Nexon, uh, one of the largest game companies developed the kingdom of the wind on the, uh, this particular slide. Uh, we cannot use the, uh, this particular game these days, but uh, when you go to Jeju, uh, there is the next museum, next game museum. And it, uh, I took the picture when I visited this particular museum uh, two years ago. So you uh, still uh, enjoy uh, this game uh, when you go to uh, Jeju Island. Uh, suddenly, uh, broadcasting immersion, uh, meaning one of the major component of esports is broadcasting. Uh, Tuniverse, uh, uh, cartoon, cartoon in the channel uh, was the first broadcasting to show uh, the esports in South Korea. Therefore, you know, the uh, broadcasting immersion uh, was ahead in uh, other uh, countries. <clears throat> Based on uh, digital development, Korea uh, finally developed the first StarCraft League between 1998 and 2016, uh, meaning Korea created the early boom of esports. Uh, e uh, 
uh, PC banks, again, uh, fostered an environment of competition and the spectatorship, meaning you know, the people are watching esports you know, on uh, the, uh, television or you know, the, uh, via the internet as early as 1998. Uh, PC bank exploded in popularity uh, with the introduction of high-speed internet uh, and the st uh, StarCraft uh, in 1998. Uh, several offline uh, competition events also started, and the first esports league in the field of online gaming started in Korea uh, in 1997. Uh, in 1997, uh, PC bank chains uh, provided the first national gaming uh, online gaming league. Uh, known as KPGL, uh, which was organized as an offline uh, games uh, league. The use of uh, PC communications um, like uh, Hytale uh, and the Battlelet uh, played the major roles in the formation and the development of professional gamers and esports in the late 1990s. Later, uh, esports boom was made in South Korea. Uh, for example, uh, when the StarCraft Championship game was held in Busan uh, in 2004, it attracted more than 100,000 spectators. During the same day, a uh, pro, uh, pro baseball all-star game was held in Busan, but uh, it only attracted 15,000 you know, uh, participants, uh, which means that the boom, the population Sports was greater than the other uh, pro baseball game uh, in the early 2010s. Korea also developed world esports game uh, since 2004, and therefore Korea has become a capital of global esports. Later, uh, several games beca uh, became part of esports after uh, StarCraft gone. Again, StarCraft Championship ended in 2016, and uh, uh, during the same period, uh, several games, including League of Legends, uh, Overwatch, uh, Dota 2, became part of esports. Uh, uh, for example, on this particular slide, uh, the two uh, championship games won League of Legends uh, in 2013 and the Overwatch Championship in 2019. Two you know, the, uh, game uh, teams won San Francisco, won you know, the, uh, Vancouver Titans, uh, won the, uh, the uh, championship. Uh, there are uh, many esports teams, and uh, some of the teams, including Vancouver, uh, San Francisco, and, uh, uh, and Toronto, have several uh, Korean players. Uh, as you might see on this particular slide, in Canada, uh, there are two uh, Overwatch esports teams, one Toronto Defiant, uh, another uh, uh, in the Vancouver Titans. Vancouver Titans is supported by Vancouver Canucks, the ice hockey uh, in the, uh, pro, in the team. The majority of players you know, the, in these two teams, of course, are the uh, Koreans, because Korean uh, players or Korean American players are much better than uh, uh, North American uh, players in general. Not only in Vancouver, again, not only the Toronto, but uh, in uh, North American teams. Secondly, uh, uh, let me talk about the uh, institutionalization of esports in terms of three ways, institutionalization of terminology, institutionalization in academia, and institutionalization of esports in terms of uh, intent uh, with the media. Uh, in, in terms of institutionalization of term, uh, uh, this is very interesting uh, because it is not important for general, but it is very important for uh, academia, uh, academians and the players. Previously, until 2017, many people used esports uh, in different you know, the, uh, terms. Esports with the S capital, esports E capital, esports with the hyphen, or esports without hyphen, or without the end, any capital letters. But uh, uh, in 2017, the AP, uh, AP style guide uh, uh, developed one particular you know, terminology, esports without capital, without the end, the hyphen. The correct spelling is esports due to industry trend and you know, the general usage. And the capitalized as esports if used uh, at the beginning of a sentence. It's done. Uh, AP you know, they developed uh, this particular you know, the terminology, institutionalization of uh, you know, the term. 
the decision based on Google trend resulted, uh, resulted uh, uh, indicated that people searched more often for sports without the hyphen or capital letters. Uh, this kind of the, uh, term, uh, institutionalization of term uh, happened in, the, in several areas. Uh, for example, the X Games were institutionalized by ESPN in 1993, although the event was not first held until 1995. Uh, originally, it was called the e Extreme uh, X Capital uh, Games, but are now X Hyphen uh, Games. Uh, as you might understand, the Korean wave is booming. Uh, many people are there for you know the pronouns or uh, uh, the right uh, you know the uh, in different terms. K-pop uh, with K P capital, K-pop uh, without you know the capital, or the Korean wave uh, with W capital or, or Korean wave without W capital, uh, which means that uh, we uh, you know, the the term of K-pop and uh, Korean wave yet, yeah. uh, although uh, the Korean wave phenomenon started uh, almost uh, 20 years ago, or um, even beyond uh, 20 years ago. The second institutionalization uh, is the end, institutionalization in academia, uh, meaning as a reflection of uh, the growth of esports. Uh, uh, the first esports conference was held uh, at the University of California, Irvine, in 2018. When we uh, gathered together to uh, develop, you know, the, uh, present our papers, we also enjoyed the games and also uh, enjoyed the end of the some uh, performances. This is Irvine had the end of uh, esports arena uh, in campus, which is very rare meaning uh, students are playing games uh, during the end of the uh, daytime. They must pay some fees, $1, $2, but nevertheless, they don't need to go to the mountain base. They don't need to go to uh, gym or uh, the dorm, but uh, go to this uh, luxury, uh, very well-made uh, esports arena to enjoy uh, uh, esports games. During the end of the uh, conference, some uh, students also do the performance to their, you know, the cosplay, as you might see on this particular slide, uh, institutionalization of the, in academia. Another, you know, the institutionalization is the, the publication, continuing publication. So this is the, the latest publication, uh, actually they are edited by myself, uh, Global Esports Transformation of Cultural Reception Perceptions of Competitive Games. It, uh, you know, the uh, uh, words appeared only uh, one and a half months ago. So I particularly emphasize the history institutionalization monetary power of uh, media and esports and the collegial esports use culture. Therefore, you know, there are about 17 chapters uh, talked about uh, the recent growth of esports, which is you know, the one particular uh, form of the institutionalization. Uh, the third institutionalization of esports is, of course, uh, the most important and the most popular uh, is the involvement of media. The history and the institutionalization of esports you know, the edge coming in three uh, ways or three waves. The first one is again, amateur community, uh, for example, they play the game, they are playing game, uh, sport. Uh, of course, this is a sport, not the end of the, uh, you know, the physical, but uh, electronic sport. So institutionalization and the, pro, you know, the professionalization. The third one is media entertainment. A focus on sports event as entertainment product over competition, as Taylor uh, mainly talked about. Therefore, sports is the, you know, the combination of the game, sport, and the media. And the, you know, the sports you know, the finalized as the, you know, the media uh, started to involve and started to uh, invest. The, pro uh, the process of institutionalization concerns how institutions are uh, universalized and uh, regulate or rule set for competitive play and to promote an institutional philosophy to legitimize and uh, reflect the character of the sport. Finally, it propagated the institution, uh, institution sport to ensure its continued experience. 
is put as a complex again because it involves diverse uh, cultural and economic perspective embedded in these three uh, main areas game, uh, sports, and media. Uh, Esports is a new arena uh, or a new area developed through the convergence of culture and technology, uh, culture and sport, and culture and business. The convergence of online games uh, with digital media has two levels of integration. The one is the integration between electronic gaming and sport. The second uh, is between electronic gaming and digital media, uh, which is convergence between culture and uh, business. In terms of the involvement of you know, the sport, uh, uh, media, uh, the convergence of digital games and the media are uh, finalized when eSports uh, finally jumped in this particular you know, the business. ESPN originally denied to broadcast the eSports by saying this is not sport. This is not sport. But uh, uh, in 2016, it finally started to broadcast the eSports and therefore uh, you know, the, it was the, uh, the finalized as the uh, institution. Uh, eSports is one of the most uh, important part of the largest uh, segment in the United States. According to the Washington Post poll, 38% uh, of young Americans identified as a fans of esports or competitive gaming, 38%. Uh, similar to the other 40% who said that they are fans of the other uh, NFL. 38% on esports, 40% on NFL, very similar, which means that esports is one of the largest in particular for the, uh, the American news, uh, North American news. So let me now the, uh, turn the, our point to the, uh, the three conventions in Korean esports, therefore uh, global esports. But uh, let me start with the, uh, the, uh, the case of South Korea. Why the, uh, Korea is so important? Why Korea has developed esports faster than others? Therefore, what's the implication or what's the influence of Korean uh, esports in the, uh, the global esports? Uh, esports has been identified with three major conventions, all related to South Korea, Korean contingency, uh, competition uh, later among players through network games, uh, broadcasting media's uh, involvement. So therefore, uh, we will talk about these three major uh, you know, the conventions, Korean contingency, competition among players through network games and broadcasting. Broadcasting, not the other new media uh, involvement. The first uh, unconventional, meaning the other, they are conventional, developed by South Korea. They are now, the other, there are several unconventional you know, the perspectives developed by uh, North America, but uh, based on Korean uh, contingency, Korean uh, influence. Global game players and the fan, uh, fans think Korean esports as the highest and the most advanced league. As the early adopt uh, adopters, Korean have players uh, play the several esports games as a career, which cannot be seen in North America. Many pro players in Korea are, are high school dropouts. This is very controversial. Because of this particular the component, Korean parents don't, you know, the, don't allow their uh, children to play the, you know, the digital games. They might drop uh, their you know, the high school to become the, you know, the players who uh, uh, only enjoy the, you know, the digital games. The majority of the professional game players in North America are college students, too different. Many high school dropout is the, the conventional, but now in North America, college student unconventional to be conventional. According to the, the one the, the interview, uh, he said uh, Korean players are extremely smart and uh, analytical. When we think of esports, uh, Korean players who are methodical, intelligent, and uh, comes based on their early exposure and uh, practice. Another male player also said, Koreans are equipped with high skills, not because of their talent given, but because of their hardworking manner, uh, which is uh, true because uh, Korean players or 
of players or hopefuls, they must play more than 12 hours per day and sacrifice their own time, their own personal time. No the date, no drink, or only a practice, which is the other one particular. This is not only, of course, in esports scene. Uh, when you, um, you, know, the, you might understand the K-pop is one of the, you know, the most important uh, part of Korean wave and the, you know, the uh, early teens uh, or later teens, they practice uh, 13 hours uh, in dancing and singing to become you know, the superstars. So it's very you know, conventional, but not in uh, North America. Uh, these perceptions of the esports by Canadians are not much different from uh, those of Korean players and, and the fans. One the, the Korean female uh, fan said, the most important thing in Korea is that people recognize the game players as a job category, uh, which is prospective. In the 2010s, the emergence of mainstream resources brought into esports via uh, investors, uh, uh, sponsorships, and the personnel uh, in North America. For example, in 2015, the National Collegiate, uh, you know, the, uh, Collegiate uh, SLA Association in North America featured 1,600 collegiate teams playing League of Legends. There are other games, uh, Overwatch, Dota 2, for example, CSGO, therefore, you know, the, the number of the, you know, the teams uh, will be uh, bigger than uh, this particular figure. Then much important, then much big in the, you know, the uh, college sport, college uh, you know, the, uh, uh, education. The second unconventional pros prospect is the competition uh, versus the entertainment meaning uh, there are two different uh, perspectives. One uh, for the, the competition developed mainly by Korea, but uh, the second one is entertainment uh, mainly developed by uh, North America. Two different uh, uh, prospects. Uh, as esports itself identifies, it refers to what players compete through network games and the primary platform has been PC in South Korea. However, uh, with the rapid growth of uh, smartphones, mobile gaming has become one of the largest game genres, and the mobile gaming itself is becoming part of esports. Mobile esports is growing in popularity due to the widespread of a smartphone and the accessibility of controls. A fundamental shift of the major platform of esports uh, from PC-based online gaming uh, to smartphone-based mobile gaming uh, is uh, evident, which is another unconventional prospect. So uh, you might see two you know, the images, one gain glory, uh, uh, mobile gaming, one crash of clans, another uh, mobile gaming. As this slide shows, uh, unlike the, uh, the online game uh, sport, of which only a few, uh, three, five players as a team, compete against each other. Uh, as this slide shows, you know, the hundred uh, thousand of you know, the gamers are playing and they are competing against each other at a very limited small space, which is an uh, uh, unconventional trend. Uh, regarding the comparison of online gaming and the mobile gaming, there are two different you know, trends. General players, and the fans toward mobile games, while professional uh, players, esports fans play online games and watch online based uh, competitive games. So in North America, uh, many people are enjoying their games on their smartphones, but uh, professional gamers, they are still uh, enjoying playing online games on the, uh, the PC, on the, uh, the internet. Our fans enjoy mobile games because of convenience easy lures. Pro gamers prefer online games to mobile games due to interconnectivity, screen size, uh, skills embedded in these games. For fans and players, mobile games are for entertainment, the second in the unconventional, while online games are uh, for uh, competition, conventional. A pro gamer also said the difference between mobile and the online games with you know, the money investment. Meaning, uh, quote, I'm not a big fan of mobile games, mainly because I have to put money in uh, games to become a high level player. 
uh, which you know, that bothers me a lot. Mobile gaming is not about skill, but about money, unquote. In order to, you know, to, to be a top player, you must buy some component on the other mobile gaming, unlike the other uh, online gaming. Therefore, uh, real players, professional gamers, they don't like this kind of uh, mobile uh, nature. Global you know, the use prefer online gaming uh, to mobile gaming in conjunction uh, with eSports, as long as they, uh, they are eSports players and the fans, uh, which are different from general players. Uh, playing games on PC is not disappearing there for any time soon. Although mobile gaming is booming, mobile gaming is rapidly growing. People's interests are different between sports fans and uh, professional game, uh, gamers. And online and mobile gaming go hand in hand in the realm of esports. The soaring use of smartphones may trigger the shift in digital game uh, uh, cultures and their esports. Therefore, you know, the, uh, we might think of the importance of a uh, smartphone a bit later. The third unconventional uh, uh, prospect is broadcasting versus online streaming in the smartphone era. The rapid growth of esports is related to media or game, uh, in particular broadcasting, in particular in South Korea. When esports started in Korea, the major outlet for the game leagues was TVs. Again, Tuniverse Cartoon Network was their first broadcast uh, uh, showing uh, esports. Primarily due to two cable channels later, OGN and the NBC Game Net until uh, 2012 uh, later, IPTVs, again TVs, and the, you know, the two web portals neighbor on this slide, and the down game players involved in professional gaming. However, the main medium for electronic esports coverage in most countries is the internet, unlike the other South Korea, unconventional, uh, which was the unconventional. Are uh, turning into a conventional trend, meaning internet is the unconventional, but uh, now is the conventional. Even the uh, you know, the uh, Korean uh, uh, the two portals neighbor and the uh, the down you know, the uh, uh, now Kakao use the uh, the uh, their network to show uh, uh, esports games. Now, for example. Uh, as of now, uh, LCK, LCK Challenger League Summer uh, is uh, happening, and the uh, the uh, one uh, uh, cable channel, uh, three uh, internet channels, you know, the broadcast uh, this particular you know, the uh, championship game. The development of st uh, streaming technology in the 2010s, including Twitch TV in 2011, has been another milestone uh, for the. Uh, Professional gaming, uh, TV, uh, as you might see, you know, if you are you know, the, the game fans or you, know, the, you are you know, the game scholars, uh, Twitch TV is the you know, game changer. It just, uh, uh, Twitch, uh, Twitch TV is their streaming service, uh, started its service in uh, 2011. Most of all, most of all, Twitch TV supported the establishment of the uh, esports arena at the UC of Bain, as I talked about. Not only UC of Bain, Twitch TV has the, uh, supported many departments or establishment of esports arena, arenas in many universities in the United States, in France, even in Turkey, which is the, uh, the, uh, very important. In terms of the, uh, the uh, Korea versus Canada on smartphone, this is one particular you know, the important final uh, you know, the, uh, uh, prospect. Uh, Korean esports, again, not the Kennedy. Korean esports fans enjoy games you know, through their smartphones and particularly uh, partially uh, internet TV, while Canadian fans enjoy esports mainly through online streaming services like uh, Twitch TV. Among 20 you know, the Korean interviewees, uh, 16 uh, participants said that they used to watch esports on their smartphone. On their smartphones, while two of them watched the television channels and another two interviewees enjoyed it through the internet. One female uh, university student said 
I prefer television to smartphone. There, however, because the television has a big screen with a high quality definition, there is no buffering as well, which is uh, convenient and uh, enjoyable. North Americans, however, are, are different. They used to follow esports through uh, online streaming services, and the outlet is PC connected to the internet for both amateurs and uh, professionals. Among 20 professional uh, players interviewed, 10 said they used the uh, computer to watch Twitch or YouTube, while three used the smartphones to watch uh, in other, uh, Twitch. A 26 male player in Vancouver said, I watch eSports uh, through uh, Twitch on my PC, uh, not uh, just because I already have a game open, this is very important, game open and the streaming service open as well. The person, the interview wants to uh, follow uh, eSports all the time. Therefore, uh, openness is one of the most important component in selecting uh, 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 his or her own uh, you know, the medium. So uh, mobile esports has been increasing uh, in general uh, because of the increasing role of smartphones as the other major medium uh, to enjoy esports. The previous unconventional concepts have become conventional means. Uh, it's a smartphone may transform uh, esports in, uh, in the near future or at least uh, in the long run. So uh, I have uh, articulated the history and institutionalization of sports, esports, uh, three main ways. Uh, Korean esports contingency in the global esports scene. The potential shift of esports focus from online gaming to mobile gaming in the era of smartphone and the shifting outlet are there for, for esports. Once non-traditional esports has become a very tra traditional sport for many uh, with online gaming and the broadcasting uh, the converged. Of course, this is partially because of uh, mobile gaming and therefore you know, the smartphones. Starting in the late 2010s, esports has moved into non-traditional markets and trend, not only Korea, but also the end of even Africa, Latin America, and the end of Middle East. No more Korean only, no more Korean only, no more online gaming only, no more broadcasting only, which have expanded uh, the boundaries of the esports sense uh, in the global esports sense. Uh, thanks so much. Um, I may not be, you know, uh, one of those people who watch online gaming all the time, but I certainly was one of those teenagers uh, playing uh, playing online game growing up. So I can certainly relate to some of uh, your comments there. Uh, so please, uh, at this time, use the chat function to share your thoughts or questions that you may have, and we'll be more than happy to ask um, on your behalf so that the professor can answer. Uh, we did have one question come in, so I'll start off with that question. Would you be able to talk about gender representation among players and fans in Korea and globally? Um, this is a very interesting point. The gender distribution uh, on the end esports has been very controversial. Uh, first of all, uh, because of the the, the, uh, the, compo uh, the composition of esports in the players. Uh, in most cases, the majority of the esports players are male uh, players not the other female players. Uh, even in South Korea, uh, there are now 10 uh, 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 esports teams. None of them are uh, a female driven uh, esports team. Therefore, gender distribution, uh, gender division uh, in esports is severe uh, more than other areas, other sports. Uh, there are uh, you know, some attempt to make the other female uh, esports teams, but uh, uh, anyhow, uh, it was not successful in South Korea. They made the, the uh, two teams for the other uh, StarCraft uh, uh, was not the other popular. Therefore, you know, the, uh, the, the teams you know, the just you know, the, uh, ended. Uh, in uh, North America, uh, it's very similar. Uh, there are no many the other female players not the other professionals. Therefore, uh, the majority of them 
in terms of their professional uh, male dominant in you know, the kind of you know, the sports area. But uh, uh, in terms of fans, it's not the same because the, the majority of the, you know, the fans actually female. So the, you know, the, when you go to uh, esports arena uh, to enjoy the, this particular you know, the, uh, uh, game event, you might watch the, you might see the, the, uh, the, the majority of them are female. So uh, in terms of fans, uh, the, the female are uh, kind of the, the majority. So there are some two different uh, perspectives uh, in terms of the gender division on the eSports. Thank you very much. All right, we had another question come in. Uh, would you be able to talk about Oh, no, that's the question we just read. Uh, the next question is, would you be able to give us further thoughts on solutions regarding the problem of high school dropouts and acceptance among students, uh, among parents? Right. So uh, uh, this is very controversial. In South Korea, uh, one of the most uh, important uh, you know, the, uh, uh, norms is uh, uh, going to good uh, university. Therefore, you know, the, when their children are playing games, the parents uh, hate it. They don't like it. Therefore, you know, the, uh, the, they understand that some of you know, the happy gamers just drop out their high school and to be, uh, to be the other gamers. They don't like it. So what's the solution then? What's the solution? University and the other government must develop some programs game department or game programs in the School of Communication or School of the, the Computer you know, the Science. Therefore, they must recruit some uh, you know, the good you know, the players or potential uh, players. Therefore, they you know, the must you know, the, the allow them to play, to practice in campus as a part of their uh, in the program, uh, which means that uh, a student might go to, uh, 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 be, uh, they might be players uh, while studying uh, in the you know, the universities. I think that's the other good solution. Uh, in North America, in North America, again, the majority of them are you know, the uh, uh, college student. But I you know, the personally uh, know the you other know, of one particular student who is the, you know, the uh, university student at the University of Toronto. But uh, he wanted to be uh, a pro, uh, professional player uh, and uh, quit the end of the university and the end of the, uh, now playing as a professional player. Uh, I understand the, the decision. I supported it. But uh, uh, most of all, the point is that the student at least went to the end of the university. Which is you know, the, uh, uh, you know, the very uh, desirable. So in the context of South Korea, they must provide some environment that you know, the players can play while study, studying. So uh, that's the other kind of solution I'm thinking of. Thank you. That is very interesting. Um, and it leads nicely into my next question. Uh, is really This one is about the role of the government. So mm -hmm. as one of the most promising businesses of the 21st century, esports games uh, is likely to grow more more than so it must be important for the government to also play a vital role. Uh, what should the government take into consideration in establishing policies to support the growth of this industry? No policy. No policy is the, the good policy uh, in the game industry. Uh, whenever the government you know, the, uh, had developed its own policy, uh, those policies are regulations which means that they want to block uh, some part of the, you know, the sport, uh, e-sport, or some part of you know, the digital games, uh, so and so forth. Therefore, the government policy actually uh, halt the growth of the uh, game industry and the growth of e-sport. So no policy is the best policy. That's however, very interesting. Yeah, however, uh, the government also needs to support the, uh, the uh, game industry and the you know, the esports by providing uh, again some you know, the deregulatory you know, measures, allow the you know, university to develop the you know, the but of but the gaming uh, uh, 
so and so forth. So uh, although the government, some people might think the government needs to support the, you know, the game industry or esports. Uh, personally, I don't think so. Uh, secondly, the government, the law, the role of government must uh, limit to uh, financially and legally support, not deregulate, not regulate the game industry and the, the, the uh, esports. Thank you. All right, we have a question uh, from one of the audience members. It says, outside of South Korea and North America, which parts of the world see a dynamic growth of esports? Interestingly, they are uh, Africa and Latin America. So at the end of the, we might think that Africa, Latin America uh, have no infrastructure, no ICT infrastructure. Uh, it's not. They, uh, they have developed uh, uh, necessary infrastructure and therefore they are now enjoying esports. Therefore, the, uh, the, uh, as I explained, I edited one book of uh, Global Esports and published uh, uh, a month ago, two months ago. Uh, two chapters were you know, the, from the Africa and the Latin America. They said that uh, esports is booming. Uh, in Africa and uh, Latin America. Therefore, other than the uh, Asia uh, and North America, I think that uh, Latin America and the, the uh, uh, Africa, Latin America are two major hotspots in esports. Okay, I wonder why Europe is not one of them, though. Do you know? Ah, uh, of course, there are some uh, some you know, the players, of course, the, uh, in uh, Europe, uh, and therefore, the, as I explained, the Twitch TV uh, support them from, but uh, uh, the, the, the Europeans or uh, Western Europeans are mainly playing uh, console games, not online gaming, not their yeah, mobile gaming. Therefore, you know, they have no chance to compete against each other. They are only playing uh, their own you know, the games on their console. That's why, you know, the, uh, uh, meaning, you know, the, uh, rich countries, rich countries, they don't play online gaming, mobile gaming. Relatively poor countries play uh, online gaming and the mobile gaming because they don't have money to buy console. So the you know, the esports is you know, the network game sport. For, online and the mobile, not their console. That's why. Okay, very interesting. Okay, next question uh, from the audience. Would you explain about esports content trend with smartphones? Okay, can you repeat again? Yeah, would you be able to explain the esports content trend uh, with oh, okay. smartphones? Right, right. So the, uh, uh, let me, let me uh, briefly talk about the, the comparison between online and the mobile games. Uh, in South Korea, uh, between late 1990s until uh, late 2010s, uh, online gaming was the largest in terms of the revenue, in terms of export, therefore in terms of number of players. But uh, starting in the end of the 2010, early 2010, uh, mobile gaming uh, had become the largest in terms of number of gamers, uh, uh, revenue, and the in terms of export. Meaning, uh, mobile gaming is growing uh, not only in South Korea but also in other countries, mainly because of uh, smartphones. So the content, the, the, the developing uh, according to the growth of you know, the uh, smartphones. For example, when uh, online gaming was popular, the majority of them uh, played uh, MMORPGs, massively multiplayer role-playing online game. Meaning they played one game for several months. In order to finish uh, one particular game, they must spend a lot of time, several months, even several months. But uh, mobile gaming is uh, for pastime, for the, uh, the small uh, time segment. So MMORPG is not good fit for the, the uh, mobile gaming. Therefore, they developed the casual gaming, meaning play one particular, particular game within three minutes or five minutes. So two different you know, the, uh, directions. But uh, uh, the game companies also understand that the 
uh, 30s or uh, 40s originally started with online gaming are now playing uh, mobile gaming, but they still wanted to play uh, MMORPGs. Therefore, uh, they are developing semi MMORPGs, not yet several months, several hours at least. So there are some uh, new trend in the end of the uh, mobile gaming in terms of uh, content. Thank you for that. Okay, next question we have. As you mentioned, it is a billion global industry. Can you tell us about esports marketing slash promotion industry in South Korea? Um, esports is the, uh, the in general uh, game industry is the largest. Uh, meaning the end of the uh, in terms of industry, uh, esports is, uh, and the, the again the gaming industry is much bigger than the, the uh, film industry broadcasting industry and the K-pop industry. So the, in terms of uh, export, for example, the amount of the, the revenue uh, from the, the export in gaming is the, much bigger than uh, both the, the broadcasting and the, the, the film uh, combined. Then much uh, important. Therefore, the, the, I think that uh, secondly, uh, the number of the employees, the number of employees uh, uh, in the uh, game industry, uh, the number of employees is getting bigger. Therefore, it's, uh, uh, many you know, the, uh, game companies are hiring uh, new employees, uh, skilled and uh, uh, passionate uh, employees. So uh, the, you know, the, uh, the industry, gaming industry uh, will be continuing uh, it's the, the kind of the, the uh, dominant position uh, in the, the entertainment industry. Thank you. Okay, another question from the audience. What aspect of esports makes some young people so enthusiastic about it? Sometimes not sleeping at night, or you know, is it addictive? Addictive? What is it? Uh, uh, it's a very tricky question because the, the uh, in order to answer this particular question, I have to explain the culture, youth culture, overall youth culture uh, among the, the uh, Korean teens and the early 20s. But uh, uh, most of all, uh, they you know, the, the addict to uh, digital games uh, partially because of the, the competition. Partially because of competition. Unlike the, the North Americans, they are you know, the playing games for fun. Uh, for entertainment, but uh, in South Korea, they are playing to win the game. So competition uh, is severe in, in all areas in South Korea, education, jobs, all kinds of, but uh, that kind of you know, the overall culture uh, uh, embedded in uh, uh, gaming culture, uh, esports culture. So uh, they must win, they must be top player in any particular. Uh, for example, uh, several years ago, uh, any pang, uh, candy pang, uh, two important mobile gaming were very popular. You know, they played to be top players, meaning you know, that they want to compete with you know, another player, another good player. Therefore, the other uh, briefly, uh, partially competition is uh, one of the most important you know, the part uh, in the kind of the, uh, the uh, gaming culture. Thank you. Uh, this one actually uh, segues into my next question. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe you mentioned that 38% of American youth are fans of esports, and that's a big number. So mm -hmm. many teenagers or youth are especially finding interest in esports these days. Since youth are still going through a growth phase, there may be some side effects such as game addiction at an early age. Uh, mm -hmm. How can the industry avoid such negative side effects, if any, um, and promote positive online gaming experience? Right. So I think this is the, uh, the question, not only the industry, but also society together uh, consider. Because at the end of the day, are future leaders, uh, future the end, uh, the members uh, in our society. So therefore, the end of the, uh, we have to uh, provide you know, the good uh, uh, solutions. But uh, uh, in North America, 
I compared to South Korea, uh, compared to South Korea, I don't worry too much because they are at least go to you know, their college and they play for fun in most cases. Even though they are you know, the, uh, playing the, you know, the playing the, you know, the as the, you know, the professional uh, in the, instead of uh, continuing study, uh, they you know, they have you know, the, a certain level of education, certain level of you know, the mental you know, the, uh, exposure, which is great. Uh, secondly, uh, they you know, start as the, you know, the professional gamers. Once they figure out uh, the future of their own life, uh, for example, uh, they can make their money uh, through game. Therefore, they are uh, showing their games on Twitch, on YouTube. Therefore, they certainly uh, have their plan uh, to uh, you know, control their own life compared to South Korea. Therefore, I'm in the, uh, the situation in North America uh, is uh, relatively better. But uh, uh, nevertheless, uh, uh, I think that uh, uh, this is not the you know, the a matter of the industry, but a matter of the you know, the overall society. And we ha we have to meaning the government, university, game industry, and in general society must talk about uh, uh, how to build the good positive images and the directions of esports. Thank you. Okay, next question I have is, I believe this was a chapter in one of your books when you showed us your slide. Uh, are eSports only for you? Please tell us more. Oh, 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 can you repeat again? Yeah, I believe you shared a, a screenshot of your book. No. And I, I think one of the chapters said, um, are eSports only for you? Oh, so I'd okay. like to learn more about it. Right, right, right. So uh, I, I, uh, 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 this is very interesting. Uh, uh, it means that uh, uh, the uh, millennials and the Generation Z, you know, the younger you know, the generations, they you know, the, uh, play games, they enjoy games. Therefore, you know, the, they don't you know, the, think of the, you know, the, too much their future, uh, their parents, or you know, the uh, society. Sometimes they are editing to you know, the games a lot. But uh, uh, nevertheless, you know, the, oh, the chapter says that it is very important to develop your own perspective. So therefore, the most important. So you know, the, oh, once you start, you have to think of several things, but uh, once you start, you must uh, stick to your own plan your own the you know, the, the overall the you know, the direction there because it's about you not about us not about others that's the you know, the metaphor but uh, most of all uh, the, the, the chapter says that you know, the the most important consideration is yourself thank you that is uh, that is interesting as well the next question i have is you mentioned that the third wave of institutionalization of esports is media entertainment, where the focus here is on entertainment product over competition. Mm. Uh, so, what kind of effect did this have on most people? Did more people end up enjoying esports because the sense of competition was not there anymore? Uh, uh, yes, and, yes and no. Uh, first of all, the institutionalization of, of esports in conjunction with the media uh, is very important because the, you know, the, uh, it you know, the extended the scope of esports, uh, meaning uh, it you know, the, uh, attracted more audiences, general audiences, general players. Previously, uh, esports was the, you know, for professional gamers or diehard fans. But uh, uh, because of the involvement of media uh, broadcast, broadcasting and uh, the general audiences who are playing, but are not IAD fans or not IAD you know, the players are still enjoying for entertainment, agitated entertainment for their fun. Therefore, uh, it is a very important step uh, in expanding the scope of esports. Thank you. 
Okay, I have another question for you. This is very interesting, by the way. Thank you. And I know you're answering a lot of questions without a break. So thank you, Professor. Um, the next question I have, and it, this may be the final question unless we have another um, question come in from the audience. But the final question I have for you is, what is the outlook of esports? What do we expect uh, you know, to be the next wave post mobile gaming? Okay. Um... Think about the, the American uh, film industry, Hollywood industry. Uh, Hollywood is the largest you know, the film industry uh, in the world. So you know, the, uh, they you know, the made uh, uh, a lot of money uh, uh, in, uh, in the United States. Of course, they are combining uh, United States and Canada, but uh, out of the, you know, the uh, state. They are staring. The growth is uh, shrinking down, actually because of two reasons. One, eSports, digital games. Another, Netflix. So I don't want to talk about Netflix effect, but uh, let me talk about you know, the eSports effect. Who are going to uh, uh, theaters? They sh should be teens and uh, 20s. They are not going to uh, uh, cinemas anymore. They are playing. They are enjoying eSports, which means that uh, Esports is getting bigger and the you know, the getting the you know, the challenging existing entertainment industries, including film industry, broadcasting industry. Therefore, the prospect is very bright. Esports, the future of esports is very bright because the number of the you know, the uh, audiences, number of are uh, gain the uh, gaining uh, you know, the higher and higher. Uh, secondly. Uh, think about you know, the COVID-19 we are living. Uh, because of the COVID-19, uh, uh, face-to-face interaction disappeared. Therefore, the, you know, the many people are playing games uh, at home. They are you know, the work, uh, working from home, but uh, some of them are <laughs> playing at the end of the homes, meaning the number of players, number of games are growing. Therefore, even the end of the, this particular COVID-19 era, uh, after uh, uh, maybe in post COVID-19 era, uh, esports uh, in general, uh, the gaming industry uh, will be very prospering. Thank you. Okay, so that's all the questions I have, and I don't believe we have any new questions come in. So I, I believe that is it for the Q&A uh, session. Thank you so much, Professor. That was a lot of information you shared with us. Thanks so much. Thank you.